All right, Jed, can you t can you please tell us why you and the Waratahs wanted to get involved with the world's greatest shave this year? Uh, yeah, it was just an initiative from uh, a couple of the boys. Ned Slack Smith kind of put it forward to the group, and I've got a connection to. Uh, I guess leukemia. Um, my cousin sadly lost his life when he was 20, you know, a, a while ago now. Um, but that's why I have the connection with the Starlight Foundation when they put it forward to do this. Yeah, I jumped at it. And how can people get involved and support the world's greatest shave and the TARS uh, fundraising page? Yeah, I guess click and donate. Um, yeah, support the boys. We've got a couple of rough heads here and. Uh, yeah, we did it to, to support it and uh, hopefully people who, who don't want to shave their heads can either send some money or shave your heads or colour your hair. And the boys, as you mentioned, Bradley shaved their hair, the girls dyed their hair blue. Can you talk us through the process? Were you a bit nervous uh, when the clippers got out and who do you think looks the best after it all? Um, I wasn't too nervous. I think I'll be more nervous when uh, my missus and daughters see me in about an hour's time. but. Um, no, nah, I wasn't too nervous. I honestly think, yeah, Ned Slack Smith currently suits it the best. Ferg is a little bit patchy. I think he needs to run a razor over it when he gets home, but we're definitely going to need some sunscreen when we're playing in Fiji this weekend for sure. <laughs> and you mentioned your missus. What do you think her reaction will be? Uh, she's, she's been, a, uh, she's had a heads up, so, um, but she's still got to look at this quite regularly. So um, it could be a bit of a shock for her, but I'm more so worried about my daughters as well. <laughs> and on a serious note, mate, how does it feel knowing that you're making a real impact and real difference in the lives of Australians impacted by blood cancer? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, any foundation or, you know, whether it's Starlight, World's Greatest Shave, you know, what ability, or all, all these, you know, non-profit organisations that are coming together um, to help support families, help support people going through hard times. It's, uh, it's really special and um, it's just great that people around here are willing to jump on board and put themselves forward and, uh, yeah, make themselves a bit vulnerable because those people go through really tough times and, you know, if we can do that for a little bit, then it's no worries on, uh, for us. And we've got the Drua this uh, weekend, first time the Waratahs are playing a Super Rugby match in Fiji. Uh, you got your kit bag ready, is sunscreen going in as well this week? Yeah, I think sunscreen, zinc and plenty of hats for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to pre-apply at about 12 o'clock and then I know it was a 12 o'clock game so I'll pre-apply in the morning then re-go again before kick-off because I'll need all the help that I can get. <laughs> Any thoughts on headgear? Uh, no, nah, it's going to be 40 degrees. The last thing I want is another layer of headgear on top. I hate, I hate wearing headgear. And football related, mate, we've had two uh, really tight defeats uh, going down by two points and two top New Zealand sides. Um, obviously want to get back in the winner's circle this week and Fiji won't be an easy task. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, any team that goes over there, the support they have, they just lift, they find another gear. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge for us. As we said, we've, we've come off two consecutive really close losses. Um, uh, we've fought really hard in those losses um, and, and showed what we're about, but we just got to get over that hump and, and there's no greater task than going to Fiji this weekend um, and, and trying to put a good performance on over there. Fijian boys obviously uh, traditionally like to throw the football around. How important is it to the side to maintain composure and not get caught up in that? Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's going to be a big part of our game plan. Um, obviously that's what their whole game is based around, the, the offload, their ability to play, you know, ad-lib footy. Um, yeah, if, if, if we go into the game not, you know, considering that, we'd, we'd you know, be on the back foot immediately. So, we, you know, we need to keep that front of mind and, um, yeah, try and nullify that. Do you guys take confidence from the fact that, you know, the Highlanders and the Blues are two of the top teams in the comp and you really matched them? Obviously, you're not, you're not happy just matching them, but do you take confidence from the fact that you're not too far away? Yeah, there's, a, there's an element of confidence there. Obviously, disappointment is the main one. Um, but there's some really key learnings and, and there is a fair amount of confidence considering you know that blue side put 40 on us over there in the semi-final last year and um, 
you know, we beat the Highlanders, but they're a much better side this year. Um, so there is an element of confidence that we have taken out of it, but it just comes down to hard work and, and wanting it more. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say we're, you know, got our tails up thinking that we're really close. We, we definitely need to work harder and, and nail a few things in order to get the result this weekend. Injuries hit pretty hard last week and uh, Julian Heaven made the most of his starting to do. You know, he's 73 minutes, he was really precise with his lineouts and got through a mountain of work also. Mm, yeah, he was awesome. Um, mate, Jules has been doing that here since September, um, putting in the hard yards and he's been showing what he's about. Um, I was, I was really confident in Jules, not only in his line-out, but in his contact area and um, just his overall detail and his application that he's put into to trying to get that opportunity. And it's awesome for a guy like him to, to take that. And also Jay coming off the bench, um, you know, nailing a couple of key line-out throws, scoring that more try at the end of the game to give us a chance to, to win the game. Um, two huge moments for two really key guys in our group. And played in Fiji with the Tars, but I was trying to recall, had you done in NRC or at any time? Yeah, we did in NRC, yeah. yeah. What was your recollection? Which which city or area were you in, do you remember? Uh, it was the far one, I can't, it wasn't near the airport, it was yeah, the other right. side of the island. So I was, yeah. What do you remember of the week and the game? It was, we flew the day before, and then we left at like three o'clock in the morning, and then did like an eight hour bus ride across the other side of the, the island, and then, um, Yes, uh, as I said, they they go another gear over there, and um, yeah, they put one on us. Uh, I think we got dished up that day for for the NRC, um, and that's what you got to be aware of. Like, yeah, it's not going to be the perfect scenario. You can't expect perfection when you go over there. You're probably going to be warming up on the backfield in the stadium, or or something. When definitely when we did for NRC, there was few rocks on the ground and stuff like that you got to just kind of take it in your stride and and know that that's what is going to happen over there and um yeah just stick to your processes to try to get the outcome everyone's got theories on why visiting teams struggle to win over there what from what you've seen lately what do you why do you think that is that they made that such a fortress over there i think it's their crowd to be honest with you um i mean Fijians naturally are people, they play for more than themselves um, and when they're around their people you, you can see them, they just lift, they, they pack out their stadium with 15,000 know, Fijians who were going crazy the whole game. Um, that was the week you were playing? Oh no, sorry, that's, I, I think that's, uh, that's why they lift mm. over there. Um, I mean, we had it down at Amy Park last year. There was a 10 minute period before half time where there was only probably 100 Fijians behind the goalpost, but we're, we were just getting teed off on the whole time and they were just echoing out the whole stadium, just that small group. So I can't, can't wait to hear what, what it's gonna be like with 15,000 over there. Where would be the craziest place you played in terms of the crowd? And are you, do you, you guys think that this could be almost trumped up this weekend? Yeah, ones that come to mind, like the old Newland Stadium versus Stormers um, is always a good one. Pretoria, um, even Scotland, places like Scotland, Stade de France, when I played over there with the Wallabies, like, yeah, they're, they're a different level of, uh, of fan over there. They're so passionate and you can see that with the Fijian fans is they care so much about their rugby team. You saw it at the World Cup and you've been seeing it in the last two years with the drill being in, or three years with the drill being in. Um, so it's, it's on us to try, you know, control momentum to, to minimise that crowd noise and minimise them lifting. When you played a few years ago, I'm not sure what year it was. 2018. 2018. Mm. Was it hot? Like, was it? Yeah, I remember it being hot, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a particular memory of how you dealt with that or like, at the point when you realise it's hot? <laughs> Jim, when you wake up, your shirt's drenched. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just hot. It's, it's hard to explain. It's just so hot and muggy the whole time. Um, it's hard to prepare for um, because. I mean, to a day like today where it's rained all morning and then come out quite hot is probably good practice for us, but it's going to go up a, 
another level because boys are in the sauna now trying to get some more heat exposure to try to get used to it, yeah. And just lastly, do you use any soapy balls this week at training? Or, uh, I know that gets done sometimes. Yeah. What do you do to try and combat that like, legitimately when you are catching a pass? As, as I said, today was probably the, a really good example of it. Like, the ground was really wet and boggy. Um, and it came out really hot in the afternoon, so it was it was genuinely really humid and hot out in the middle there, and um, the ball was wet, and uh, guys were we got put in a hole a little bit to try combat and and learn to deal with those scenarios. But um, we've got to have faith in the the preseason that we've had and the work that we've put in, and go over there with the element of confidence that we've we've done the work. Just lastly. Um do any of the boys have family over there that you know of, or anyone coming to the game, or long lost relatives or anything? Um, um, Langy. Langy, that's okay. Langy. Um, I'm sure Marky would have. Langy's got family coming to the game. Okay, okay. cool. Yeah, that's cool. Standard family. Okay, yeah. We've obviously got Mezu and stuff who have told us a lot of stories of what it's going to be like. Vuate, who are some other key guys in our, in our squad who are telling us all stories about their time in Fiji, but. Yeah, it's it's gonna be a cool experience for sure. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Thanks, Thanks guys.